Yeah, so I wanted to do a, a brief lightning talk on how you can uh, directly upload files from uh, a web browser or a client uh, directly to S3 using a service called Cognito, which is one of the uh, Amazon S3 services. So what is Cognito? Um, the description that Amazon provides is it's something that allows users to sign up, sign in, uh, manage access control uh, for web and mobile apps using Amazon services. It's something that scales to uh, millions of users, support single sign-on with various social identity providers, Twitter, Facebook, Google, that kind of thing, um, and enterprise identity providers that offer um, SAML for single sign-on as well. Um, basically, syncing data, handling authentication, it's what it can handle. So if you've got maybe an app that you want it to be serverless, you could use something like Cognito to handle the authentication side of things. How does Cognito help us with what we might want to do in terms of uploading files? Um, well, it provides us with a mechanism to dynamically allocate uh, IAM permissions within Amazon to uh, di different resources. So if we've got an S3 bucket and we want our users to be able to upload files to it, instead of creating credentials for that user, we use Cognito to dynamically create some credentials for them so they can temporarily access Amazon S3. Uh, we can also further restrict it. So if we've got a bucket for all of our uploads or for our avatars or for something like that, we can say this user is only allowed to access anything that's prefixed with their user ID. So you can kind of segregate things on a per user basis, which is quite nice. There is another way to do uploads directly where you're kind of not receiving the file on your server, processing it, and then sending it to S3, and that's using pre-signed URLs. Um, they're really handy if you may be building a, a mobile app and that is kind of taking a file and, and doing the upload because you can use a pre-signed URL to say, just throw a file at this URL and take care of it. With a web application, you need to um, build a special form which has this information in and it's a little bit more complicated with pre-signed URLs. With Cognito, a little bit more setup that we need to do, um, but it's easier to implement to the client side, bit of JavaScript that we drop in, um, and it also gives us that additional <coughs> handling of, uh, of permissions, so we can say to that user, you're allowed full access to anything in the, the folder that corresponds to your username, whether it's uploading, deleting, editing, they've got kind of free reign within that folder if we want to give them that. So to get started, we need to create an S3 bucket. So we've got somewhere to put our files. So I'll quickly whiz through uh, what's involved in that. Uh, so we just give the, the bucket a name. So I've just called it PHP any demo, pick a region. Configure any options. I've just left everything default there. Um, Want to set some permissions. It's one thing which I've done slightly differently here, which is I've unticked these two, which are designed to block public uh, files. Normally what you'd want is if you upload something to S3, you would have it so that it's private and you would use your application to decide who is allowed access to that, whether it's a pre-signed URL or something else. For the purposes of building a quick demo, I've unticked those so a user can upload files and anybody can see that file if we've, if we've given it public permissions. Um, but for security, they do recommend that you have those uh, turned off. Uh, gives us a review so it confirms everything that we've set for our bucket. Uh, and then we can click and create the bucket. There's one other thing that we need, which is to enable something called cause, which is cross-origin resource sharing. That effectively says to our S3 bucket, we're gonna receive effectively API calls and file uploads from something that isn't Amazon um, and isn't a web application, uh, is a web application hosted somewhere else. So we use cause to basically say, yeah, we're expecting various requests that don't come from, from Amazon or don't come directly through the API. Uh, so we have to enable that. And there's a, quite a, a standard there for um, enabling that. We also might want to have a, a user that can access our S3 bucket, somebody that's allowed to do more than just our, our end users who can go in and kind of upload a particular file. Our background worker <coughs> might need to resize files, delete files that are across any user's folder. Um, so you can create a, an IAM policy that basically says, I want full access to the PHP ME demo uh, bucket. Um, so we can list the bucket, put objects in it, get objects from it, and delete objects. Um, so if we use that uh, policy, we can create an IAM role that would give us administrative access to that, uh, to that bucket. <coughs> okay, so we've got a bucket, we can put files in there, but we now need to allow our users to, to put files in there dynamically without having to kind of give them credentials every five minutes. 
first step with Cognito is to create an identity pool. Uh, this is, in a way, a grouping of users within the or within your Amazon account. You're saying that we've got a number of users that are all related to this particular application, and they can all log in using a particular authentication scheme. Uh, I think of it almost as a bucket for my users. Uh, so we create a new identity pool. Just give it a name, PHP and e demo. Not sure if you can see that very clearly there. Um, and then at the bottom, it's got a list of authentication providers. So we can say we want to let people log in with Facebook, Twitter, Google. Um, I've selected the custom one, and I've just provided a, a developer name there, which is uh, login.phpne.demo. And that's what we use to define our custom authentication scheme. When we click Next, it then says it's going to go away and create those two IAM roles, one for a user who authenticates with Cognito and one for a user that doesn't you can use this to allow guests to upload files as well if you want to give them temporary credentials without having to worry about um, turning off uh, access tokens every five minutes um, so we're going to want to customize that and within here there's the option to view the the policy document that gets generated for uh, for that cognito user <coughs> so if we expand that it gives us the option to provide our own policy and what i've put together is a quick policy there that says I want full access to S3, but only in the resource for our particular bucket. So we've got the, um, the bucket name, PHPNE demo, and then saying it's got to be in the user uploads folder. And then there's a suffix at the end there, which is basically the, the user's cognito identity. That's something that would be dynamic for each user. So we're saying whoever gets this permission, they're allowed to do anything with the uh, PHPNE demo, user uploads, their ID folder. They can't do anything outside of that, but they've got free reign in that particular folder. So we've got an identity pool there that we can use. We now need a, a user that can connect to the Amazon API and manage Cognito and create new uh, users within uh, Cognito. So we need a, a new user with a new permission. Uh, I've just created a very simple permission here that just says, uh, I want full access to Cognito identity and the resource in question is the, the identity pool that I've created. So I've just pasted in the, the ID there. Um, and that policy will effectively say that whoever's connecting to the API is that user can use Cognito to create new, ID, new IDs for our users, which gives them the, the, the credentials. So we've got S3, we've got Cognito. Let's start to actually put something together. So pull in the SDK. So I'm just using a quick sample Laravel project. So I pulled it in with Composer. I've got to define some settings. So with it being um, Amazon, we've got various keys and, and details that we need to use. So I've provided some S3 information, the, the region that I'm in, the bucket that I'm in, and then for Cognito, what my identity pool is, my developer authentication name, and then access key and secret, which is what we're going to use at Laravel to talk to Cognito and say, create a new Cognito identity for user 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 it is. Since we're going to use that SDK, we're going to want to bind that into our container. So in our, my app service provider, I've bound Cognito Identity Client um, to the implementation there, and I've passed in the credentials that I need. So I can now type in and say, give me a Cognito Identity Client, and it will give me an object that's already authenticated and I can, can work with. So my controller make sure that I've passed in the identity client to the constructor so we've got that to work with. And then in the controller itself, building up a request here that says um, the talk to the identity pool that I've created. Um, I'm using the authentication name, which was uh, demo.phpne.login, and I'm passing an ID, which is going to be our user ID. So we're effectively saying create an identity incognito for our user who has an ID of 1234. Um, that ID will map to what's called a Cognito identity uh, further down. We send that off and we effectively get a token for that new user. So we've said to Cognito, create a new user if there isn't already one, or um, give us the details for an existing user and give us a temporary set of credentials that last for, I think in that case I must have said six minutes, I think that's six minutes. Um, six minutes or six hours, I'm not sure which. So we've effectively got some temporary credentials that if we use it gives us free reign to that user's S3 folder of that bucket. And then at the bottom there, 
I'm just taking various variables that we get from Cognito, so the identity, the token, the bucket, region, all that kind of standard stuff, and sending that to the view. I'm not worrying too much about that. And then at the client side, we just need a little bit of JavaScript to take those tokens, authenticate with the JavaScript SDK, uh, and then we can start firing up loads without kind of it ever hitting the server. So the first step is to um, instantiate the AWS config. So I'm just saying what the region is, what the identity pool is, what my ID is. So I've got my token there from Cognito. I'm doing the same with S3. So I'm saying yeah, I've got a particular bucket that I'm interested in, and that's where I'm going to be working with. And then a JavaScript listener that can listen for when a file upload changes, grab that file upload, and we just throw it straight to S3. We tell it what the bucket is. We tell it the file that we want to use. So I'm prefixing it with a, a bucket prefix there, which is my Cognito identity and a subfolder, because I'm only allowed access to the, the Cognito identity um, folder within that bucket. And then we fire that off to S3. Um, that then takes care of everything for us. So client side, there's no worrying about leaking tokens. The tokens are very short lived and they're only for that particular user. So if somebody kind of gets access to that, they're very limited as to what they can do. Um, and it effectively means that we're not having to permanently allocate tokens for every single one of our users. We're just saying this is a general role that we want to apply to any one of our users when they log in using Cognito. Um, it's a very quick whirlwind of, of how it works, how everything uh, fits together. I've got the, the slides for this are online and also the sample project I've put together. I did have a demo, but I'm not on my laptop, so I can't really uh, run through that. Um, but it's all online, so you can have a look at the code, see how it all fits together. Uh, and hopefully you should be able to very quickly use Cognito to authenticate with Amazon without creating lots and lots of tokens for all of your users. <coughs> so, thanks very much. <laughs>